How's it going everybody? This is Nathan at Kitten Equipment Company. We are Northern Kentucky and Greater Cincinnati's Five Paw Premier Coyote dealer and we have got an RX7320 Power Shuttle cab. So RX7320 PCB. Uh, let's say that five times fast. So this has been a really hard model to get all year long. Um, we finally have some that we were able to get up on rubber. This is actually one that we had to put together just to do the parade. We had our July 4th parade last week, so that was awesome. Um, so uh, I finally got it together. We can finally do a video on it, and there's a lot. There's a whole lot of stuff on this thing. It's a lot of standard equipment, a lot of stuff to go over, so this might take a minute. Um, but if you just, if you don't mind, I'm going to walk around and I'm going to talk about some standard features and some specs and what it might compete against and uh, money maybe a little bit of money although if you see this video for, you know a year from now don't don't yell at me if it price changes i'll just give some current pricing um yeah so let's start up at the front and we can go to the rear and talk about standard equipment and uh maybe some implements and things like that so this is a kl7320 loader on this guy it's it's the same loader that's going to go on every single rx model um it's pretty cool it's it's got self-leveling standard equipment so that's what these secondary bars are up top. Out of the box, it's gonna level this bucket. So uh, the best way to describe self-leveling is you put a set of pallet forks on here, right? Um, those pallet forks are sitting like this. And normally, if you go to raise a loader, your pallet forks are gonna come back like this. Or if, uh, if you lower the loader, stuff's gonna curl forward. So you kinda have to come up a little bit, then adjust. Then come up a little bit, then adjust, right? With self-leveling, it does it for you. So you put your pallet forks in the pallet, you pick up, and it stays level. And you go down and it stays level. Um, so that's standard equipment on this thing. You don't have to add it like you do on some. Uh, it's an 82 inch bucket out of the box. This loader has a 3,373 pound lift capacity, I think. You'll have to check on that. It's really, really close. Um, that's a lot. So that lift capacity is no joke. It's going to compete heavily uh, with, you know, Kubota's M7060 or new M4D series, John Deere 5075R, uh, not the E, the R. Um, it competes well with those tractors um we have got a 73 horsepower four-cylinder turbo under the hood um, it is pre-complicated emissions so let me explain that basically you have um no emissions everything below 25 horsepower is not required to have any sort of emissions by the epa then you have what we call simple emissions and that's 25 to 75 horsepower that's what you're going to see a lot of manufacturers that make a you know a tractor this size that's just under 75 horsepower and that's the reason so all this has is that little diesel particulate filter it collects the soot and then as it needs to uh burn that soot off it just does an automatic regen process while you're using it where it opens up and it clears it out um, you can still do a manual regen but you don't have to most of the time you'll, you'll do an automatic um, so beyond that complicated emissions is whenever you or beyond the simple emissions into the complicated emissions is when you get into that diesel exhaust fluid so this does not have def um, that's important. So, yeah, four-cylinder turbo. Um, your total weight on this guy, so tractor, loader, tires filled, is going to be, it's like 8,500 pounds. Nine, I mean, it, it'll jump to 9,000 pounds pretty quick. You start adding stuff. But some people do like to put the wheel weights on here. Some people try to get this thing above 10,000 pounds, and, and that's about right. For a 75-horse tractor and the things you do with it, it it's it's weighted well. Um, it is all cast. There's no aluminum. It's, it's heavy. Um, so yeah, loader, 3,300 pound lift capacity. I like to point out a couple things on here. First, how well these loader lines are ran. So you got a nice armored plate here covering the ones that are breakable. You've got metal lines all the way up and then your flexible lines are the only things that aren't steel. Uh, we have a bucket level indicator standard. We have these nice retained grease fittings all the way through as opposed to a little exposed grease fitting that, that gets sheared off and then makes you cuss. Um, you've got a nice loader mount everything's integrated really well so the the loader was not a secondary thought on this thing it was out of the box planned for so all the quick attach couplings are right there when you take the loader off uh, the loader brackets nice and up out of the way um, there is a metal bracket on the bottom that runs all the way to the rear end so it braces that loader bracket for all that lift capacity and it also makes a pretty decent skid plate um, if, if you run up on something you don't you don't mean to that loader uh, that loader bracket rides up on top of it and protects the bottom end of the tractor. Um, so yeah, uh, let's talk about service stuff. So if I, let me do this. Let me lower this loader. And then I'm going to 
pop this hood here. You gotta pull this pin, and you gotta pull this pin. Do it with my left hand. Oh yeah. Pull this forward, and then this pin right here opens it up. It's one piece hood, comes up all in one fell swoop. So under here, this is really cool. All the service stuff can be done basically from right here. You got battery, air filter, some fuses, radiator screen, radiator overflow, fuel filter, fuel filter prime, fuel filter drain with a water separator. Uh, you've got oil filter, oil dipstick, all right there, oil fill, front axle. I mean, everything virtually can be done except for the hydraulics right here. So service is super easy. You don't even have to take the hood up to take the loader dipstick out. You don't have to take the loader off to do the majority of stuff, right? So very well thought out in the service. Everything's lo located in a pretty good spot. Um, on the cab, and let's talk standard equipment. So this thing opens from both sides, as it should. You can get in and out both sides. We have steps on both sides. It's a two-piece step because it is pretty tall. Um, the only thing obstructing this side is your throttle. So you've got a hand throttle and a foot throttle, and that's, that's right there. But it, otherwise, it's really nice and roomy getting in on both sides. Uh, cab lights are standard equipment. Mirrors are standard equipment. you got front work lights and rears. There you go. You've got uh, a window here that opens on the outside, and you've got a weird window in the back that opens, as well as this glass for visibility, and we're going to go through that later. Um, but yeah, both doors can open and close from the inside or outside and that's a nice feature um tires on this model are large so we have 16 9 by 30s in the rear um and you have oh what is this size in the front 11 224s that's funny that's actually the ck rear tires on the in on the rx front um these tires are on the 73 horse only if you get the 66 horse version of this thing so an rx 66 20 that's going to be a little bit smaller tire but that's really the only difference um so most people, if they're going to buy an RX, they're going to jump up to the 73 horse because you're getting a bigger tire and you're getting more horsepower for very little cost difference. Uh, it tends to be a little more popular. So, yes, uh, large rear tires. They hold a lot of weight when we fill them. Uh, we have a 10-foot cutter on the back of this one for display, and this is one of many options. So when you're dealing with a tractor this large, you can be, I mean, it, basically minimum 7-foot, uh, just because the seven foot bush hogs, the only thing that's going to sit outside past the rear wheels. Um, but you can do an eight foot pull type, an eight foot lift type, a 10 foot pull type. Um, I've seen an eight foot lift type, but or, I'm sorry, a 10 foot lift type, but I don't think that's necessarily a good idea where we're at in Kentucky with our, you know, rolling hills. Um, but yeah, 15 foot flex wings, 12 foot flex wings, all of those things are possible. We sell these with many different variants of bush hogs and, and the options are limitless. There's all kinds of stuff you can run, but this 10 foot cutter runs really well behind this set up in a pool type. On the rear end here, we've got a lot of stuff. So standard set of rear remotes and you can add two more sets of rear remotes. Uh, you've got the Coyote Special that raises and lowers the three point hitch from the back. You've got a planetary bevel gear leveler. You've got your extendable links and your pin type check chains. You've got a nice PTO access, a flip up PTO. You've got an adjustable draw bar that is a clevis type out of the box. You've got, there's more, a trailer uh, connector. It's a seven pin connector. Um, you have draft control back here. There's your pressure sensing. Uh, you've got external rear lift cylinders. So those basically move the weight a little bit closer to the lift point, giving you more lift capacity and uh, they're a little more serviceable. So when you have to pull those off and rebuild them every once in a while, it's much easier to do when they're right there. So very well laid out rear end. Everything's nice and easy. It is, uh, it's a good design. Um, here's something on the fenders. So this little light thing here, if you look, it is uh, separated from the rest of the fenders. So this is a very common break point. And if you do break it, you're not gonna be in for the cost of rebuilding this whole fender that's integrated with the cab. You just have to replace this one piece. So that's a little quirk there that's pretty well designed and thought out um i'm gonna get in this thing and we're gonna go over the cab and i kind of want to go over the transmissions too because if you look at the rx's you're going to see two transmissions op options uh, they don't make it in a hydrostat it is only a gear drive but there's two variants of a gear drive so let me actually let me close this hood so we can see climb up here if i trip then you get to see it on camera give it a good slam move this up There we go. Now we can see. So this is the power shuttle variant of these two transmissions. And it's kind of the same idea as the uh, RX6620. We don't really order the non-power shuttle variant because the cost 
to get this power shuttle is very little and it's once you see how it works nine times out of ten somebody's gonna prefer this so check this out I'm gonna start this guy uh, in order to start it we are in any range we want we're in any gear we want we have to make sure we're in neutral here on the shuttle lever uh, we have to be on the clutch but we're not going to use that clutch after this i'll show you why so let's turn it over and start it make sure the preheat's good yep all right hopefully you can hear me let me close these doors there we go so when i drive this thing get my loader off the ground um i can let off that clutch and this power shuttle when i want to move between forward and reverse let me pick a low gear i'm going to go in low range first gear so we're nice and slow all I have to do is push this shuttle lever forward and we'll drive forward. I don't have to use that clutch. My foot is not even on the clutch. Watch. We're forward. Now let's go reverse. We're reverse. Forward. And reverse. And it will do that over and over again. It's designed to do that. It's a, it's a fully synchronized transmission. Your gears are fully synchronized and your shuttle's fully synchronized, but it it has a clutch pack system and that's how it moves between forward and reverse so a lot of companies have this this is uh you know john deere power reverser um that power shuttle has been around for a while but it's a much needed upgrade over your old school synchronized shuttle system where you have to ride that clutch all day and you can still use the clutch if you want to do it old school be my guest you can use that clutch and shift through your gears and do all that but you don't have to every one of your forward and reverse gears are synchronized and you can just go between forward and reverse on the fly um, it makes this thing way more convenient to use, right? Uh, you also have on this shifter, so you got three ranges and, and four speeds on this shifter, so you have 12 gears. When you're inside a range, you can move between all of your gears with the push of a button. So if I hit this button, it, it's, it clutches the same way my foot clutch does. So I can move between first and second, second and third, third and fourth, just by pushing the button and releasing it. So you push the button, move it into gear, release the button, you're in that gear. And you can downshift the same way. So you do not have to constantly ride the clutch whenever you're changing gears, moving around in the field. Uh, you know, it, it's very common with this thing, you're bush hogging, you, you're going up a hill at a lower, lower speed, and then you get to the flat and you wanna open it up a little bit, you don't have to stop, you just hit that button, move it in, and you're, you're gonna keep on going. So that transmission is night and day better than its synchronized old school shuttle power, power counterpart you know the older version so we only really order them this way um it's it might be a 900 hundred dollar price difference between the two so you tell me which one you would buy uh standard equipment in the cab if you can hear me we're running i got the ac going so it's wired for heat and ac out of the box right it's it's already wired for sound we haven't put the radio in yet but uh you know you already got the speakers for it it sounds pretty good um here in the dash we have horn headlights turn signals we've got tilt steering we've got road flashers uh, four-wheel drive on this guy is push button and I want to I want to tell you about that too so this push button four-wheel drive will get you out of a tough spot really quick if you are going over your hillside and you forget four-wheel drives not on you can go oh crap and hit that button and you don't have to worry about trying to get your mechanical four-wheel drive lined up and in, in engaged in gear right so you just hit that push button and it's on a system that's tied with that is this brake setup so if my brakes are tied together they're not split because you can split these brakes if they're tied together i can well basically when i hit them tied together four-wheel drive comes on so if you look the button's off right that's on that's off the button's off but inside our dash, four-wheel drive is still on. I'm gonna turn off the brake, and it's off, and it's on, right? So, four-wheel drive will always turn on whenever you stop with with both brakes together as a safety thing. If you go over the hill and you hit the brakes, it will turn on, turn on four-wheel drive to save you from slipping and sliding. If, if somebody gets hurt on a tractor this size, nine times out of 10, it's because they lost traction, or an implement pushed them over the hill, you know, and something, something didn't get enough traction four wheel drive wasn't on and it was only trying to get traction with two wheels and you know they, they go for a free roll um so yeah that system will save you there it, it's a really good nice system very advanced um yeah so four wheel drive we have a hand throttle and we have a foot throttle right um over here we have our loader control right there in your right hand nice and easy out of the way um this is a button i want to tell you about so this is equipped with 540 economy pto and that is something that 
a lot of people ask about in their smaller tractors, they say, hey, I have two PTO indicators in the dash, right? I have a 540E and I have a 540. Um, all of those smaller tractors only use that 540 setup, but this one is equipped with the 540 economy. The RX is the first tractor that is. So that 540 economy setting basically lets you run the rear end, the PTO, at a lower engine RPM. It just changes the gearing so that the, the PTO is still spinning 540 in the back, but I'm only at 1800 RPM doing it. So this tractor can run such a wide variety of implements that do all kinds of different things. Most of them don't require all the power that this thing can deliver. So you can use a, a lower engine RPM for less noise and less fuel consumption and run those implements just fine. Uh, but then when you get the big boys, you get the 15 foot cutters or so on and so forth, you can run up at your higher RPM just by switching the gearing right there. So if I'm at 540E, I'm running at 1800 RPM. If I'm at true 540, I'm running about 2400 RPM. Uh, and that's, that's the first tractor that's equipped with this in the Coyote lineup. So, there's your uh, 540E, there's your push button PTO. So this turns the PTO on and off on the fly. You do not have to be stopped or on the clutch or in neutral, you just turn it on and turn it off, right? Uh, here you've got a rear remote and that rear remote controls the rear. There's slots for the other two rear remotes you can add. You've got your automatic PTO that shuts the PTO off whenever you, uh, you, you raise the three point up and then it turns it back on when you lower it down. You've got a manual region button if you have to do it. And then you've got a button that lets you set the sensitivity of that shuttle. So if I, if my shuttle's a little too aggressive, I can turn it down. If it's uh, if it's you know want, I want it to go faster, I can turn it up. Up here, you've got front and rear work lights. You've got your windshield washer with fluid, right? You've got a um, increase and decrease button that has to do with this cruise PTO. So cruise PTO, that's something else that's hard to explain, but it's very very useful, especially on a tractor this size. Um, that PTO cruise control, basically, if I am driving forward and I've got my PTO on, I'm running this bush hog behind me, I turn this on and I hit set, and that it, it reads where my engine RPM is and says that's where I want that to be, to be spinning. That's basically, that's where we want the, the PTO to be spinning. So if I start going up a steep hill and the engine RPMs start to get bogged down, it will manually, or I'm sorry, automatically rev the engine up to get to me where I, where I need to be to keep that 540 RPM. If I start going down a hill and the engine RPM start to go up, it's going to rev the engine down to keep that 540 where it needs to be. So basically you're just driving forward doing your thing and it will rev the engine up and down for you to keep the power where you want it to be on the PTO. So it's a very useful feature. Uh, highly encourage using it on a tractor this size. Uh, you've also got your rear defrost. So. That's the stuff on this side. We also have our, our cup holders, one, two. We have uh, draft control on this model. So you got your regular three point, you got your draft control. It's, that should be standard on a tractor this size. Over here, you got your range selector. You've got a nice big storage tray. There's fuses under there. You got 12 volt charging. Another cup holder, because you can't have enough of those. Um, and then you've got down here, your full suspension seats, adjustable. You can adjust forward and back on the seat and you can adjust lumbar on the seat. So very comfortable. You've got three-point lift speed control. You've got rear differential lock. So all that stuff is standard equipment. There's nothing on here that's been added. There's really not much you would want to add on a tractor this size, right? Um, it's. I mean, the only thing I could think of is maybe a rear wiper, right? Or a, a front third function kit, possibly. That Most of the stuff is standard equipment. And for that, for that tractor, for this tractor, set up with the loader, with the rear tires filled, we sell it for a little north of 46 using Coyote's cash rebates. So I would highly encourage you, go look and see how that competes with everybody else's that size. Let me get out of here. We'll do another little look at the thing. Yeah. So that's the RX. Hopefully I gave you most of the information that, that we're looking for. Um, I, I do this thing off, off the cuff, right? So it's just information, I'm puking it out. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to get a hold of us or look up the specs. My name's Nathan, this is Kitten Equipment Company, Northern Kentucky's five-paw premier coyote dealer. Thanks.